Hey everyone, welcome back to the live stream. We are in the final days of John and Susan's custom van build, and uh, we've got a list of things that we need to knock out. All right, so here is the list of things that I'm gonna try to do one short stream a day to keep you guys uh, updated on what's going on, but other than that, I am head of the grindstone, making sure that I get this thing knocked out. So what do we have left on the van? Um, and also, John and Susan, if you're watching, this is the list that we didn't get a chance to uh, go over uh, when you came to visit today. So the fridge stack, um, that is something we're going to talk about. So I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of a sneak peek at that. We're going to talk about this in just a second. Um, Awesome. Thanks everybody for tuning in that's coming online. Uh, next we have the kitchen galley. So we just need to uh, bring that in, start the painting process on that. Uh, we're going to go over this whole entire thing when we hop in the van for the uh, fridge deck. Next we'll do the water system. Then we have a seat enclosure that we're going to put together. Uh, we have a rear fuse panel battery mount system that's going in. The passenger window. There's actually a passenger window going in that you guys have not seen me install. Um, it just takes me, you know, half a day to do that, so I'm not really stressed as far as knocking that out. So that'll be down here lower on the list. Then we got two days for system testing. Um, I have these two days pulled off because uh, I don't have all the rooftop solar uh, cables zip tied down on purpose because I want to disconnect. Uh, I want to test it um, before I plug it up into the EcoFlow, just to make sure the voltages are right before everything gets you know, plugged together. Um, it's not that I don't trust the wire diagrams, I just want to be extra careful after doing all that work. So these two days are for one, bring the van outside, um, test the rooftop solar, and then we'll be doing some more electrical there. And then the last one is the delivery day. So. Pretty exciting. So this is the goal, is to knock all this stuff out um, in the next couple days. And uh, that starts with um, finishing up the fridge stack. So let's go inside the van and look at what we've done so far. Now, I tried to do a time lapse or whatever, but um, with the timing, I just I needed to stay focused and knock this out. So. None of this was really covered, um, other than a couple photos that I took with my uh, phone. But this is pretty much half of the uh, kitchen galley area. So what we have is we have the fridge stack we've been talking about. Um, so we have a convection microwave, believe it or not. And this unit is 24 inches wide, so if you're looking at the frame of the microwave, that's 24 inches. Uh, so big old microwave. Um, I think it looks really good. At the very top, we get that ventilation uh, for the fridge and the microwave to come out the top. Uh, we will be drilling some holes in the back left um, that'll be hidden by the EcoFlow battery, but it allows the air to convect and come from the bottom, come up past the refrigerator, up through the top, so we've got some really good air circulation. It's really important when you're making something that's such a tight uh, enclosure. Um, also, this middle part is for the Isotherm Cruise 130 fridge, so it's all set to go. Uh, right now we have this face frame that's it's not attached. Um, it's going to need some convincing to get it to look the way I want it to. Um, but in today's video, we are working on the drawer in the bottom. So I've got everything pre-cut, ready to go. All I'm doing is gluing and nailing it together, and I wanted to cover that in this uh, video just so you guys have some something to watch since uh, we haven't been posting that much. Um, I did finish this door. All I have to do is uh, put the brace in the back and add the latch. So this is so that they have access to the garage area. Um, so there's no nothing holding that. This is kind of like a friction hold right now. But um, believe it or not, this piece of wood that's the door is the piece that was from this panel. So the way I did this was I used a track saw and I neatly cut out the top and the sides and then I just jigsawed neatly the edges 
so I could use the same piece of wood uh, and not have to do another cut. Um, it's just simpler that way and I think it's just an easier way to con do construction. Um, you'll see this is bare. Uh, that's on purpose because uh, when the kitchen galley comes in, uh, we'll actually be gluing the galley to this support piece in the back. And um, everything's going to be built into this van, so it's not meant to be unbolted in any means. It's meant to be safe and all glued is basically one big piece of furniture. Uh, speaking of safety, let me pop up in the van here. So up top, we have a piece of a uh, 90 degree, 80-20 bracket, super thick aluminum. Um, it is held in with a 516-18 rib nut into the ceiling rib. So that's giving us our kind of left to right stability. And then as we come down, we've got a, uh, a like a backer piece um, that is drilled into the top uh, middle of the van, we're right above where the window goes. So that is uh, screwed and uh, bolted into this top panel. And then along the whole entire unit, and we'll have to show you photos later, but we have these glued in two by fours that have been pocket hole screwed, and they give us all of our structural support. On the left and the right hand side, again, we have the, uh, I think it's a, what is this? a one by two uh, poplar and it is glued and pocket hole screwed into the structure and that makes up the main structure for this front face that the micro uh, the refrigerator is going to bolt into um, and I picked up this pin nailer and so we're going to be going over that today as well but the pin nailer is what I needed to actually uh, so this is the thing I just got it's going to pin nail this face frame on and just multiple places and then we're going to glue it and then that will allow us to begin to actually put our fridge in um, but the fridge will go in last because behind the microwave here we've got an opening that's the perfect size for the EcoFlow screen to go right here and we can plug in the wires in the back as well as the Webasto control. We fixed the length of the Webasto control so I had it coming this way and going up here, and all I did was just cut an opening here, and then I gained about two feet of extra cable, so I got plenty of room now. Um, yeah, so the drawer at the bottom, I'll talk a little bit about that, and then we're going to hop into... Uh, everything else. Let me scroll down. Okay. And I can't see the chat right now, so I'll have to come answer your questions in a second. Um, let's talk about this bottom area. This is what we're doing today. We're going to glue the box together, and I'm going to show you how I made this up. Now, believe it or not, I have not made drawer boxes. Um, as you can see, I can, I can pretty much build anything I can think of, but I wanted to make sure that this drawer box was very strong, so came up with a method, you know, uh, did the whole YouTube thing, and I've come upon a method that I think will work really good for a DIY wire um, because it's nice and simple. You don't have to have a dado blade, uh, all the fancy drawer stuff. It's just a very strong, simple drawer, and we're going to show you how to make it. Um, we are using very nice uh, drawer slides. So Rockler just came up with this brand new slide. Um, if you've ever known of Blum hardware, that's usually like the gold standard. Uh, so Rockler actually came up with their own version of that. And so it's a soft close, under mount drawer slide. Uh, it's really nice. Um, but we're going to do that here. And just like this latch... Pull right here, so we've got these marine latches. They're awesome. Um, you can get them off of Amazon. They're actually excellent quality. Very simple. Uh, but that same latch is going to be right here. And so we'll just have a pull latch, and the drawer's going to pull out. So you have that nice soft close and that, that nice positive click. Um, 
Next, we have uh, this Trilino, and we just mocked out the spacing for it. So what's cool is I'm gonna build a box uh, over here with a lid, and the lid's gonna open this direction. Um, and the lid will open here, and then this that way this lid has room to open like that. And then fingers crossed, we'll have enough room over here that we can actually uh, place toilet paper rolls or cleaner over here on the right hand side. And this will be a really nice functional space. Not only that, but if you guys can see, this is uh, enough room for a jump seat. So this is what we planned. Uh, did a lot of planning on trying to figure out getting as much foot space as we could or leg room between the seat being swiveled and this gap and then where this transition went from the bed to here. So that is uh, pretty much an update so far. Um, I'm going to go over here and bring this camera around and then we are going to start working on putting together the drawer. And then uh, if you guys are new to the channel, feel free to ask any questions. Um, you get to see, <laughs> you get to see how the shop is uh, all put together. It's a work in progress here. All right, so let's get the camera set up. All right. So give me one second and I'll pop back in. Okay. Here we go. Let's nail together this drawer. Okay, I've got my phone now, so I can see you guys in the chat if you have any questions. Um, drawer slides. Let's check out these drawer slides. So these right here are undermount drawer slides, which I think are excellent because they come with this big bracket and you can... Uh, Building wise, since uh, I haven't done, I haven't done, I've repaired a lot of cabinets. I haven't built cabinets, um, so I wanted something that I could actually uh, mount where I wanted it to. Um, but at the same time, I wanted it to function, you know, like a really nice high end drawer. So this right here, this is the plastic undermount that will go underneath the drawer. Um, we'll we'll get to all this by the end of the video. But you can see this is a, uh, it's a full extension drawer slide. This is 18 inches. And so this is what we're gonna be using for the drawer. Um, and what we're doing is our kitchen galley is 18 inches. So this is just, uh, we're just keeping it simple at 18 inches again. The reason I went with 18 inches is because uh, I needed that weird uh, structural member from a Ford Transit that's annoying to everybody that builds vans. Instead of making a special notch and notching everything out, it would take forever. I just brought the drawer forward and then that notch is right here and then this is just some open space which is fine because that gives us more airflow in the back of the cabinet. But anyway, this is the drawer. The drawer will sit on here. So this is kind of like mounted in there like that. But what's nice is, watch when, so when the door closes, you see we've got that, uh, that nice, satisfying delay shut or close. All right, so you're going to have two of these, and then this is the piece that uh, it's actually connected to the underside of the drawer. Um, we'll build the drawer, and then I'll show you where this is put in. And you guys are seeing this, me do this in real time. Um, I haven't pre-done this, so it might be very, enter might be very entertaining. 
But this just snaps and clicks into here and that allows the drawer, so the, the drawer sits on here and that's really how it, it just literally sits on top. This finger in the back keeps the drawer from popping out and leaning forward when you actually, when the weight's extended here. So that kind of grabs it from falling out. And then this front section is, it's flimsy because it needs the strength of the drawer to be its uh, structure. But it's meant to have this simple tab to where when you pull this tab, you can pull the drawer out and then clean behind the drawer. And then we need to reinstall it. The drawer comes in, finds this little hole in the back, and then it just comes in and then clicks. And then now you got your drawer back. But you need to be careful. This thing has no support right now because it's not mounted to a drawer. So, you know, be careful. Um, uh, these things break easily if they're not mounted to the drawer, so. Okay, there's our two drawer slides. So we're just gonna let them hang out over here for a minute. Um, the only thing I did not do is there is a front piece to this drawer. Uh, where'd it go? So, Let's see if I can get some pull latches. There we go. Yeah, so the front piece of this drawer I have not drilled. So there is a drawer face. So just like we have a face frame, this is the face of the drawer. So what we have is, um, I need to keep this like this so I can glue it together, but I will rotate this to give you some more visual appearance. So this is the drawer. This is the back of the drawer. Um, and so this is the drawer box. And then so this is the drawer front. And there's a technique you do where you can, uh, you can like put some double-sided tape or you can uh, locate this so like when you put your drawer in, it might be off or up it or down just a little bit. Um, probably won't show you that in this video, but you imagine the drawer goes in and this f f uh, drawer face needs to fit inside the face frame, that green face frame that we painted. So we need to actually figure out where it goes and then make a mark so we can screw it into our drawer box. Um, so I gotta figure out how to do that. All right. This is, again, another pull latch. And so we'll have this pull latch mounted. We drill an inch and a half hole, comes up here, and then we'll have room in our cabinet to actually put the, uh, the clasp that catches this. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, nice and simple. This is obviously lower than the face and multiple reasons. One, uh, it's just easier to get this in and out if you do need to remove it. And two, you don't want two half inch pieces of wood constricting this, uh, or because this, this latch won't work. So this latch will only work at a maximum of about three quarters of an inch. So that way this stays shallow and our, our latch can, can still catch the way it's supposed to. All right, so we'll have, you'll have to come back some other time because we'll I need, I'll need to need to paint this um, all that good stuff so this with the latch will be in a different video okay it's time to glue and screw glue and pin nail all right so let's see here um, make sure you have a tape measure with you when you are doing something like this because this box is really, it, it's, it's so close to being square, like the middle piece is 17 by 17 and a half. So I need to really make sure that I'm actually gluing the right things together. Um, so 18 and 3 eighths 
is our width. So it looks like, looks like I'm okay there. Um, I'm going to want to make sure I've got all my clamps ready. So you're going to need very long things, uh, very long clamps to hold the drawer box together while you're doing all this. These are uh, drawer clamps, so they clamp it, make everything nice and square. And so we will do this uh, before we pin nail. So we'll glue it first, and then we'll put these on these clamps on. Um, a little bit behind the scenes, underneath here. Um, not sure if you guys can see this. Try not to mess my work area up too much. So, there you go. So under here I have two pieces of half inch, just scraps. And these scraps are important. Because they are gonna sit just like that. Um, and they raise this half an inch. So that's important because when we come over here to our drawer slides, this bar is a half an inch. So uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the sides of the drawers don't come down uh, so far that they interfere with this uh, little shock that creates the soft close. And there's this little spot welded rest that is also uh, a half an inch. So because we're using Baltic birch that is about a sixteenth inch shy of a half inch, because it's a metric ply, um, it's still sold in a four foot by eight foot sheet, but the thickness is, is different. Um, but those sides are gonna come down and that kind of keeps it from going left to right. This helps it from coming in and going front to back. So to make sure that we have it sit on the drawer slides correctly, we need to offset this up a half an inch. Um, okay, so we got that. Let's see what we got next. Yeah, so this is where I got to pay attention. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys and then I'll, I'll put this in wrong. There we go. Okay, so that way, as I get ready to put this together, I don't have to worry about my clearances because they're all going to be correct. And I've already measured that, that uh, piece that I just took out. So it's a perfect measurement, so I don't really have to worry. I just have to make sure I glue this up um, the correct way. And I'm just doing a bunch of test measurements because once we start gluing this together, um, this glue that I use is Tight Bond, original wood glue, and it actually dries extremely fast. So we just don't want to wait around here. Okay. 
So I have 18 and 18 and 7 sixteenths is my width. Um, but my drawer space is 18 and 3 eighths. So I made it a 16th inch wider because, and this is what you got to consider when you're building a van. You can be as precise as possible, but what tends to happen is there might be like a 16 inch uh, shorter in the front and then a little bit bigger in the back. And even though you build it straight, once you bolt it in the van, sometimes it gets tweaked. So I added a 16th of an inch so that when I, <laughs> I don't want to put the box in and then have it bind. And then now this thing is too small. Even though it's correct, it, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's van building. That's just how it is. Um, Okay, we're gonna glue these first two sides, get a clamp on it, do our pin nails, and then we'll kind of move on. So I will stop talking and get to work here. But definitely, if you guys have any questions, um, my phone's over here, so you can put that in the chat. And I'm not using a brush or anything fancy. I'm just putting wood glue on here and then smearing around with my finger. So it does not have to be, you don't have to be super pro at this. So I used to just make a line just like this and I put it together, but I've watched a lot of pros and they all tend to Make sure they evenly distribute the glue. Um, now I have the bonus that my outfeed table is this melamine material, so pretty much nothing sticks to it. So I don't really have to worry about anything sticking to it. All right, so even though I know this is the right piece to put on here, I'm still going to Double check my measurement. We should have, let's see here. The inside is 17. Also, when we mount these drawer slides, we're gonna to have to come forward a sixteenth of an inch to make up for the difference in our thickness of our wood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now these red clamps you can get on Amazon. Uh, if you guys are familiar with woodpecker wood tools, um, woodpecker tools are extremely high end. Uh, however, this is an Amazon, you know, woodpecker lookalike. I like buying high quality tools. Um, this tool, for example, uh, no joke, I think it's like $400 for four of these. So I'm not ready to invest in that quite so fast. Okay, so we got this. Now one thing I've learned about pin nailing is you pin nail something, it is, it is in. 
that thing is a pain to get out. So we're going to make sure we clamp this, get it nice and square. And then we'll put a couple of pin nails in and the pin nails are going to allow us to move on to the next part of this construction. And I have to worry about um, us messing the joint up when we take these clamps off. All right. So we're using one inch. Uh, this is one inch, 23 gauge pin nail. And this is great for if you're maybe doing some uh, painting, for example. This uh, does a good job of, you can hide this hole because there's no, the pin nail, there's no head. It's basically like shooting a needle in a piece of wood. And I have like, I bought like 2,000 pin nails, so I don't think I can put too many in here. Okay, so everything looks good. I want to undo this. Let's finish up our bottom. Let that lock in for a second. We'll move on to the other side. Yeah, we really want to make sure that this is uh, as flush as can be because we got that face, uh, the drawer face that has to go on here.
Okay, so now we're going to put in the bottom drawer, I mean the bottom part of the drawer. And this is where we need to take our spacers, make sure our surface is clean and flat. And most importantly, make sure we've got the 17 and a half by 17 in the right orientation. I only laugh because it's, it's a number I made up. Okay. And so what I've been doing is I've actually been taking a uh, pencil and doing a light mark where the drawer it where the drawer bottom goes and then what I do is I take this out um, and it just allows me to make sure that I'm all the way down when I get ready to actually nail this thing together now, I might get a little messy here with our glue. It's another benefit to the lines is we can come over here. And since we know where the top of our line is, we can put our glue right on that line. Then we can just neatly rub that in. And then when the drawer goes in there, it'll actually you know, smush it just a little bit more. All right. This will be a little messy, but we can just wipe it off. I know it's dripping. <laughs> but this is the most important part, in my opinion, because this is what is going to hold. Typically, this is where you use a dado blade on a cabinet saw or table saw to actually get this uh, in a slot and then that joint provides the strength but uh, it's, it's really complicated and I know people do it all the time but I don't want to that's not the method that I'm using for for this today okay so we got a 
a lot of good glue. I'm going to pull this back. Okay. All right, that's where we want it to be. Let's get some clamps. And I gotta think of how I wanna nail this now. I have to go to the side of the table so I can get my pin nailer in the right position. Hey man, I'm telling you that saw stuff saw I bought is a game changer in, in carpentry because I do all the stuff in the track saw in the past and how precise this drawer is, it's just very satisfying as a builder to, to put this together. It makes it a lot of fun. All right, so our top is pushed down all the way. Everything looks really good. We could technically do just a quick Measurement here, got 11 and an eighth. Let's see. 11 and an eighth, 11 and an eighth, 11 and an eighth, 11 and an eighth. Triple check, and over here it looked a little and an eighth. Now remember, this is important because this this is make sure that it doesn't you know wobble on the drawer slide. So this bottom base is what actually is uh, resting on the slider itself. Okay, I did not go high enough on that one. There we go. So I'm gonna take a block of wood here and <laughs> I'm going to trace where this line needs to be. I did that one way too low. We're learning here, we're learning. That didn't go in. Okay, let's see how let's see if we messed up at all. I know one is way, yeah, this one. Okay, so my angle, my angle going in was on two of them was not the best. They kind of they came out, but the pin nails are nice. You can clip them off with a pair of 
wire pliers. Um, believe it or not, the glue is the most important part of this. So we're going to keep our spacers. With our clamps, nothing should move, but I always want to double check. So this is what I was saying that I needed to do earlier that I did not do, is sketch a line on this outside. And then just to make sure I shoot the nail above the line. Move the camera down here. There we go. Okay, so my angle, I need to make sure I'm going straight in. Should be enough for us to take our clamps off and then finish up nailing this thing together. Yeah, so down here I did one, two, and then this little third one came out. Uh, so I'm really, I'm gonna have to make sure I pull those out. If I can pull them out. They're only an inch long, so. There we go. One. And we need to pull them out because these are going to be interfering with the uh, drawer slides. Okay, we fully got all three of those out, which is great. If we kind of partially get them out, it's probably not going to be <laughs> the best for our drawer slides. Um, okay, so we got three here. We'll fix that later. Uh, let's just go ahead and get our glue wiped off. And the fact that we actually have to do this is very good. That means we got really good really good amount of 
glue in there. All right, let's clean up a little bit. Okay, let's get those pin nails in before I forget. Oh yeah, let's do the top. Yeah, it's hard to get the direction right on these pin nails. I technically could have left this one, but you don't want somebody cleaning the drawer out in the future and cut their finger on this thing, man. That would be bad. Try it one more time. Yeah, it's kind of hard sometimes to visualize where the angle needs to be to be straight. Okay. We're getting better at pin nailing. You guys are seeing it live. Okay. Good. Moving on. So right here, just while we're paused for a second, this goes in here like that. So you guys can kind of understand how this works. Now this again is made for half inch plywood. This Baltic birch is metric on the thickness. So it sticks out, it's slightly less than the 16th. Um, but what that means is we need to be aware that when this goes in the van, we just need to pull this uh, uh, let's see what we're going to do. We need to pull this back just a hair, just, just a hair like that. And that way, um, that face can be on the front of it where it needs to be. Okay, there's our bottom. Now I'm gonna have to come and sand that glue off, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna put on our back piece. So this piece is the one where we pre-drill these two holes and what they're gonna do is this goes into this notch back here. And I think it's an eighth inch drill bit that I used. And that's kind of what grabs this so the drawer doesn't fall out or tip out uh, if it's got you know weight on it when it goes out. Okay, so this is the one where I really needed to triple check my measurements because this is the one where I had to uh, had to inset this piece. And I think I needed to make it, this one was the one, 17, yeah, 17 inches. And then this. Okay. Yeah, so 
The drawer bottom is 17 inches, and the reason I did that is because this face uh, piece all the way to where this little spike is is 17 and a half, and we need to make sure that that half inch is taken up by this back piece to lock in and to give this so it clicks in properly. If it was too short or too long, if it was too long, this plastic won't uh, clip in. If it's too short, this teeth uh, spike in the back won't fully engage. Okay. All right, let's get glued up. And I think that might be it. All right, so Kathy asked, doing a nice job on, uh, you just got a, oh, thank you. You got a transit trail and you're using the AC as, So I didn't bench test it. Uh, I have installed it and when we take it outside in the next couple of days, we will test it outside. <laughs> so um, if there's something wrong then, we'll, we'll address it, but I didn't bench test the AC. Um, uh, pretty much uh, any AC I've put in, I haven't done that. It, they've, all, they've all worked well on first startup, so. Um, no, nope, I haven't tested it yet, but I am confident that it will be just fine. I'd say the most important thing would be if you have the pneumatic system is, or what I'm going to do. I don't think I'll have time to make a video while I'm doing it. We'll have to, you'll probably have to watch that video later. But um, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the EcoFlow battery is going to be fully charged before I start testing anything. It's bad. It's not good practice to test things when things are not fully charged. Um, so making sure your van battery is fully charged, like for your engine, uh, and then also making sure that the EcoFlow battery is fully charged. And, you know, if any testing equipment that might use batteries or anything, it's fully charged. Uh, if you're using solar and you're outside testing it, you know, making sure. Uh, you're outside uh, testing that. Um, all right, let me pause on that answer because I need to really make sure I don't mess this up. Okay, I'm gonna wipe the glue off because I almost, I almost messed up. Okay, so I had to wipe the glue off. Um, the reason for it is the back here So the back here where the spikes are, when I cut the piece of wood, again, because this is, this is the first time that I'm putting this together, or this system together, uh, when I put everything in, the, uh, this back panel 
I cut it the same size as these panels, but I actually need an additional half inch cut off of it. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how much that was going to be. So now that I have everything assembled, I can scribe my line and cut this on the table saw. It'll just take me a second, but I'm glad that I didn't glue it in because So this back panel, if you watch a bunch of carpentry videos, they overemphasize how this has to be cut special so you don't have to worry about the stuff in the back. Um, I, I'm just keeping things simple. As you guys see, got a box, it's simple, it's glued together. This back panel, I cut it the same as the rest because I had the table saw at the setting and it was just easier to rip everything once, but now, the, the side panels go over, the, dr the drawer base goes on top of the slides. This back one actually goes on top of the slides. The front one goes below the slides. So it can kind of be confusing. As you see, I almost didn't catch this, but now I have this resting on the top of the rails where the spike goes in. And I'm just gonna take out my pen and I'm just gonna mark right there and mark right here. And then I'm just gonna transfer that to the top. Get a measurement and then just rip this off. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the volume down because it's gonna get super loud for a second and I'll be right back. Here you guys can see and see the saw in action. Okay. All right, so we just eyeballed that. Let's see how we did. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. I'm just gonna hit this with a sander really quick. That this this glue dries so fast. Sorry guys, I have no idea how loud it was. All right. There we go, final glue up. That feels good there. Just a tad high over there, we can, we can sand that down.
I'm always back and forth when I do woodworking. So when I start to do woodworking, I want to just do prefabbed units, you know, for vans. I don't really want to build uh, everything kind of one off, but then you start building it and then it's really enjoyable. <laughs> so it's, it is, I don't know. What do you do? Rubber mallet somewhere. Where did I put it? I'm trying to keep this on the drawer slide so that I get some real world feedback here about where I want this to be. Actually, let's take this off. <laughs> I don't want to glue it to the slide. Come on. All right, so that's... We're doing the right thing. This is the right... Way to build this. There we go. Okay. So this one. Let's make sure we can get our pin nailer in here. Bring it to the edge. Seems to be the way to do this. Okay. So now we're going to need to square this top up. That's why I got this. That glue dries so fast.
So I'm just drawing a reference line so they don't nail through the whole box. All right, let's get this thing put together. This thing's taking a minute here. Just making sure we're doing it right. And another nailing reference line. So I don't do double work here, I'm trying to fix everything. Look at that. No mess ups. All right, finally. Okay, we have a process now for making drawers. I can move much faster on the kitchen galley. So the kitchen galley, I can make one, two, three, four drawers. Um, this was the biggest one. So this thing is pretty awesome, guys. I'm very happy with the way that this drawer came out. So I'll just show you the front here. So the front, I'm gonna keep these on. Uh, 
that will just ensure that this stays square, even though there, it's probably, I can take them off, but I'm not going to. Um, Cause I'm gonna work on this. So this is the face. Actually, this is the wrong one. Uh, other one's over here. So when I cut, when I, um, when I made the face frame for the fridge stack, each hole that I cut out for this drawer, I make sure I do it uh, very intentionally and I do it very precisely. So he's a track saw and I cut out the whole thing. I don't just take a jigsaw and cut it out just to rush. And what I do is by taking your time, this is the piece that I cut out. It says front here and then on the back it says bottom drawer top in the back. And this is the direction of the top. So this is the part of the face frame that got cut out to make room for this drawer. But if you take your time, you can repurpose this and it just saves a bunch of time and this will now be the drawer face. So, if I can turn it this way, now you guys can see that this actually looks like a normal drawer. It is a big drawer in a van. Um, that's one reason I was excited to make it. Um, so this will have this one latch, it'll be right up here. And you get one pull latch and then you get these drawer slides. So, um, let's see here. I wonder, yeah, yeah I'll, have to, I'll have to do that off camera. Um, okay. I got all kinds of new ideas in my head. All right, so we're going to take our drawer slides and I'm going to show you how this whole thing goes together. So remember, you got this plastic clip down here. You want to be careful, it's very fragile. It's not bad quality, it's just, it's, until it's part of the drawer, it's gonna be slightly weak. So now our drawer, we lift this up. You can see we've got our notched out area. So this is our half inch notch. And we didn't do anything fancy. We didn't do a dado or anything like that. We just made it nice and simple. And what we did was just elevate this bottom and the back side. We used, we used these half inch spacers and that gave, gave us our, uh, the appropriate depth so that we could get the appropriate depth so that we could actually um, mount this on here. So that relief you see here, this little step, let me make sure nobody's, there you go. This little step, so if we take this off, there's a step right here. So that step, so this goes right here, just like that. Um, and let's see, that's half inch. Hmm. Anyway, this goes here. I guess I could put that in the drawer. I've got about a sixteenth of an inch here. I actually might have to read some stuff. Um, anyway, this goes here. And then when we have this in the van, this will, this will come down just like this. And if you listen, this clicks, this clicks in here. If this goes in that hole in the back. So that's working. Let's get this. There 
There we go. Yep, so you click. So now this is clicked in here. So imagine this would be drilled in, bolted in here. Um, I'm going to put one. Ah, I need to pre drill it. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to hold this. So now that this is held and this right here is actually bolted into the van, when you open the drawer, you can see this now opens just like that. And then this will shut. So let's get this spike out of the back here. All right, I'm curious. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for this live stream. Let's see if, uh, how many people we got on here. Awesome. Let me head over to the big camera. Thank you everybody for watching this stream. All right guys, we made our drawer. So we're gonna go ahead and bolt it into the van, finish up the rest of the work here, uh, but yeah. We knocked that out. We are moving on to the next step of the project. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Um, hit that notification bell because I go live randomly throughout the week. Also go over to vanbuilderhq.com. Um, we actually have a free DIY van build cheat sheet if you guys are interested. It is essentially the last three years of all my Amazon purchases put into an Excel sheet and it's free. It's over 250 curated items, so if it has been purchased on Amazon and shipped to the shop, it is on this list. Uh, it'll help you just go through and see stuff that I've bought in the past. Uh, might help you out with making some decisions on what you want to get. Um, there's new stuff coming out there all the time. I do need to update it with a couple things. Uh, for example, the EcoFlow items are not on there. Um, but yeah, DIY Van Build Cheat Sheet. Link is in the description below. Um, all you gotta do is click. Put your name and email address. It'll come right to your inbox, and I really think it'll help you out. And then also, if you guys are looking to have your own custom van conversion completed, I want you guys to go on going over to odysseycustomvans.com. So the van behind me, John and Susan's van, this is Odyssey Custom Vans, so that is my professional van building business. And uh, you can check out the website here. Little video about one of my latest builds um, that is now sold. So the van right here, the adventure van that we built and took to the Adventure Van Expo and we took it to um, the Southeast Adventure Vehicle uh, Expo as well. Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo in Stark, Florida. Uh, this van, it is sold guys. So we have a new owner to this van and we will actually be uh, customizing this van further believe it or not so we're actually going to be lifting this van and we are going to be uh, doing some other modifications uh, so look out for that we'll have more pictures on that but um, it's very exciting uh, the couple that bought this it's they're awesome this is definitely their van for sure they have uh uh, this van is their van for sure. When they saw it, um, I just knew it was their van because uh, it fits them, their personality, 100%. And it's going to be really exciting finishing this up um, as far as doing the lift and a couple other modifications. But yeah, I usually show that this is for sale, but this is sold and I need to change it on the website. <laughs> um, but if you guys are looking for a custom build by me, 
click on the link right here. So this is gonna allow you to schedule a phone call with me. Um, not only will it put you on my calendar for a consultation, but we can also talk about your custom van conversion and the available time slots in the future where available build slots that I have in the future. Um, make sure you guys hop on that call if you're interested. And uh, yeah, I look forward to talking to you about your custom build. All right, guys, that is going to do it. I have to get back to work knocking this van out. I'm going to be making some additional drawers, so four more of those today while I'm in drawer mode uh, for the kitchen galley. And then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see what else has been done on the van. But love your questions. Put those in the comments. Get subscribed. And I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Thanks for watching.